Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm going to show you guys all about planting tomatoes. It is tomato planting day here on the farm. I've got my buddy Eric with me helping me out. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eric. And uh, so we're going to be planting over 200 tomatoes today. And we're going to have a whole process on how we do that. The first thing that we're doing right now is preparing the tomatoes for planting. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm prepping them. I'm going to show you uh, how I'm actually putting them in the ground. We're actually going to dig pretty deep holes to plant these. I'll tell you about why we're doing that in this episode of Nature's Always Right. I can help you out. 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 Okay, so here we go. We have a tomato plant here. It's about a foot and a half tall. Really happy with my tomatoes this year. It's the best I've ever been able to, to grow them. One of the reasons I, I really like this is because it's so long, which means I can plant this about a foot into the ground. And the reason I want to do that is so that the plant is actually going to put off roots all along the whole area that's, that's under the ground. All these little hairs will turn into roots. So it gives the tomato plant a way better root structure, uh, which allows it to absorb nutrients and water far better. So to prepare this for planting, what we're doing is we're removing all the leaves up to about three or four or five sun leaves at the top. So I'll just pinch these off. And on some of these branches, they actually need to be pruned with pruners. And when you do it with pruners, it's a bit safer. It does take a little bit longer, but we want to prevent any tearing of the skin down the stem so the plant doesn't have to heal. If you want an in-depth look at suckers and all of that. I talk about that in another video and I'll put a link to that for you. So there we go. So I left one fruiting cluster here and I've got one, two, three, four sun leaves. I'm also going to remove my suckers and that's it. So now what's left here, I have the next uh, part of the vine going up. So I have the leader right here and I've got it down enough so that I can put a lot of this plant under the ground, giving it that really good root structure. So next we're going to go out into the field and dig the hole for the tomato and then I'll show you how to put it into the ground. So for digging the hole, I'm using a three inch trenching shovel. And this makes it really easy to dig a skinnier hole and get a deep hole as well. You can also use a post hole digger as well to make these holes that would also work extremely well. And we're trying to dig these holes so that they're deep enough to go all the way up to this first stem here. So I'll actually pull out a little bit more dirt. And I want to make it a little bit extra deep because the next step after getting the holes ready is to go prepare our fertilizer and amendment mix and we're going to put a little bit of that down into the hole to help fertilize the plant and give it access to really good nutrients straight from the beginning. We'll also be putting amendments on the top of the soil as well. So let's go and make the amendment mix and I'll show you my formula that I like to use. Alright so for the fertilizer and amendments that I'm going to be adding of course the base of it is going to be really good compost and this is composted horse manure. So I would either use my homemade compost. It's gonna need like another week or two before I'll be completely ready, but this stuff is so good. And this is from a customer of mine who doesn't add medications or anything like that. And this has been aged for close to a year now, I think. So you'll need some compost that you've made or that you'll buy. And then here's a few of the amendments that you can buy. So I love this Dr. Earth kelp meal. Um, it's got tons of different trace minerals, 60 or 70 different types. And also the Dr. Earth, he puts in mycorrhizae fungi in here. So it's got that as well in the mix, which I love. And it's kind of a long-term mineral source because it's little flakes of the kelp. Then here I've got my azomite rock dust. This is 70 trace minerals from a mine in Utah. I love azomite. Um, it's got all the minerals that plants need and more because the extra minerals that the plants don't use, the soil biology is gonna use those for their processes as well. 
and having these minerals in here is going to really prevent blossom end rot or any other mineral deficient problems. If your plant has all the available nutrients from the beginning of its life to the end of its life, that's going to really combat any pest or disease problems, any fruit production problems and things like that. So that's why minerals are very, very important. And I'll put links in the description for all the different products that I use. Um, this is Roots Organic uh, Uprising Bloom Fertilizer. It is a 364 fertilizer, so it's higher in phosphate. Now fishbone meal, bat guano, feather meal, glacial rock dust, green sand, uh, alfalfa meal, lots of good stuff. So this is gonna provide any other major nutrients uh, and minerals too that I'm not providing. And so I like to add a little bit of that in there. And I'll show you the amounts that I'm putting in as well. And then the final ingredient is biochar. This is biochar that I made at home and I made all the charcoal in a little homemade fire. I can show you how I did it in a previous video, but I still need to make a really in-depth video about biochar. But basically it's a soil inoculant and it's charcoal. And the reason it's called biochar is because you've inoculated it with beneficial microbes, fungi, and even nutrients. This is an, a fantastic home for all three of those things. So it's a way of restoring uh, the health of soil, adding more nutrients. You don't have to fertilize as much by having this in your soil. So check it out if you haven't heard about biochar. It's pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so now for the amounts that I put in. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really measure things. I have an approximate amount that I put in. Um, the fertilizer, I, I do judge based upon what they recommend. So for the biochar, I'm just gonna sprinkle out a couple handfuls. And this I inoculated with um, compost and a ton of compost and worm tea as well. Like three handfuls. The biochar should be pretty much like a maximum of 5%. Some people have gone as high as like 10% in a mix, but it's not necessary. My soil is pretty good already. So I'm gonna do like 1% or not even. Then we've got our kelp meal with mycorrhizae. This is something I add to my seedling mixes as well. So for this, I'm adding about a full cup into this wheelbarrow. The azomite also about a full cup. And then same for my fertilizer. Based upon their recommendations, they say like five to 10 pounds per 100 square foot garden bed. But we're not covering the whole garden bed. We're just doing a handful in the bottom of the hole and then some on top of the plant as well. This is like two cups actually. And then I like to mix it with a pitchfork. Well, I like to start mixing, mixing it with a pitchfork and then I'll do the final mixing with a, a flat edge shovel so that I can be sure to scoop and scrape the bottom of this wheelbarrow really well. I always like mixing my compost on top of my compost pile or right next to it so that if some does spill out, it's just going back into the pile and I'm not gonna lose any of those nutrients. They'll eventually get out into my beds. I'm just trying to break this soil up a little. I like doing this technique with the pitchfork where I go as deep as I can and then shake it upwards. And that helps all the nutrients or the amendments filtrate down into this compost. Then once I've gotten it decently mixed, I'll come in with my straight edge shovel so that I can scrape the bottom. And it's important to mix it really well so that each tomato is getting the same amount of nutrients. If I see any big chunks of wood chips or carbon pieces, I want to get those out of there. Okay, super happy with this now. So now we're gonna go put it into some five gallon buckets so we can easily distribute it out into the holes. Okay, so I can test the tomato to make sure I got it deep enough. And I just wanna imagine that if I close this up, this is about where it's gonna hit on the tomato. I could even bury it a little bit deeper if I wanted to get the hole going a little deeper. You can plant it up to this first leaf here. You just wanna make sure that there's no leaves touching the ground. So all I'm gonna do is take one handful of my fertilizer compost mix, put it in the bottom of the hole. We're doing this a very systemized way. We're gonna do all the, we're gonna put the compost in the holes all in one go. This is just all about showing you guys how to plant tomatoes. If you wanna see a more systemized process for how to do this, check out my other tomato planting videos. So here we go, we got some nice root structure on this plant. I'm just gonna massage the outside very slightly to get those lo roots loosened up and exposed so that they can go out and dive into the soil. And then I'll pull my 
fertilizer back a little bit so I can get it deeper and then use some of the surrounding dirt to bury the tomato and then as you're burying hold on to that stem because sometimes you'll pull a bunch of dirt and you can knock the plant over and hurt it so just secure the stem And I could have planted this even deeper because this tomato is really tall. And then to finish it out, we're also going to add nutrients to the top. Because most of the time, you just want to feed plants from the top. But for annuals, especially heavy feeding ones like this, you can throw some fertilizer in the hole. And I found that to be very effective. Okay, so a couple handfuls on the top. Now when the drip tape goes over, it's going to water and infiltrate those nutrients to the tomato. And this is all ready to go. And the only other thing that I need to do now is I would take this string and start training the tomato. But that's going to be in my other videos, which you can see in the description. And doing this method like this with the really best nutrients, that's what's going to give you the healthiest possible plants to resist pests and disease and give you the best tasting fruit as well because they have all the nutrients available to give you that really tasty sweet fruit. So I just want to show you guys one more way that professionals plant tomatoes and that's the dig at a 45 degree angle, which is a little bit easier to dig, but it's the same process. I'll put the tomato down at the end and then kind of bend it up a little bit. I still want to compact it and everything, just like that. And we'll still attach our clip, of course, just like that. And then we'll start trellising it like this. And we'll use this to wrap the vine there we go. And we're going to get that same effect where we get extra root growth. So planting them sideways, you know, it's a little bit trickier to get them in the right perfect location as it is when you go straight down. It's also a lot easier for the um, leaves to touch the ground. But as soon as you start training it, it gets them off the ground. So those are the two different methods. You go straight down or kind of at a 45. Play with both and see what you like better.